We'll work on it. Hold up, hold up, <laughs> got that song stuck in my head all week. Ready? Hold up, shh. Good evening, America, and this is Home Edition News of Pandemic Awareness. My name is Trixie Stevens. And I'm Wesley Purdue. All right, well, we have some recent announcements from the CDC alerting us to zones of danger. The CDC has identified the northern and southern hemispheres as being a zone of danger. Also, there is 63.2% of satellites that circle the Earth that are also infected. They have recently come up with a new magnifying scope with jigger. Mm. And when pictures have been taken of the bacteria, there are a couple that have been identified. One is Streptococcus pneumoniae, bears a striking resemblance to the devil. Look out for that one. Also, gonorrhea. Surprisingly enough, looks just like your Medusa. mother. Medusa. Medusa. The snake headed monster mm. of myth that turns you to stone with we'll one look. Start with an M. The CD is easy to mistake. Wesley. The CDC has also closed down a local hotspot, Vegas. It has been described as a gonorrhea hotspot, so it's on quarantine as per the CDC. Now, fear not, America. The CDC has alerted us there is a weapon of mass destruction against these intruders. It is called, by the generic name, azithromycin. Called by the trade names, Zithromax and Zmax. Now, the indications for use are treatment of upper respiratory infections, including streptococcal pharyngitis and acute bacterial exacerbations of chronic bronchitis and tonsillitis, which Wesley knows all about. The lower respiratory infections, including bronchitis and pneumonia. It also treats acute autodesmedia, skin and skin structure infections, and gonorrhea. The contraindications are hypersensitivity to azithromycin, erythromycin, and other macrolid anti-infectives. It is also contraindicated in liver impairment. Usually the dosage must be adjusted. Also in renal impairment and in myasthenia gravis, it usually worsens the symptoms. Also, do not take if you're pregnant or less than five years of age. The life-threatening side effects include hepatotoxicity, pseudomembranous colitis, Stephen Jones syndrome, <laughs> yeah, toxic epidermal necrolysis, and angioedema. All right. Now, the most common side effects, which are less serious, include abdominal pain, diarrhea, and nausea, which my friend Wesley knows all about. Chinese food kids, just avoid it. Now, on to you, Wesley. Right as my little buddy here, Trixie, was saying, this little miracle pill is used for upper and lower respiratory tract infections. It's also used for skin infections and treatment of bacterial infections for those who may be HIV positive. It is also used for nasal infections of the nasolicure area. <laughs> For administration, you want to take it like one hour before your breakfast, maybe two hours after your breakfast, or for you, you can take any time because you don't eat breakfast for your skinny little figure there. You're going to want to finish it. You don't want to like, you know, pocket some pills as a bunch of us are, you know, kind of fans of to save them for later. And you don't want to take them with your antacids, which are your tongues, your Prilosex, your milk of my lanches. So basically what he's saying is the main thing is you want to take it the basically full course. Basically what I'm saying is you just shush and I'll finish full it. Full course your physician, physician subscribe. You take it the full course. If it's yeah. 10 days, you take it for 10 days. That's all I'm saying. Or 7. If it's 7. That's what I'm saying. That's what he's saying. So you're going to alert your doctor if you experience any of the following. If your tongue gets like a black, hairy overgrowth. You're not going to be like, 
I'm gonna cut my tongue here and give it like a Justin Bieber look and be like, ah, baby. Because Justin Bieber is not good for anyone. No, because it's gonna look like you just licked a buffalo, and that's just, no one wants that. If your vaginal area is itching, I don't know much about that. Or discharge. It just sounds awful. I'd be calling 911 for that. Uh, if you experienced some loose or foul smelling stool, I'd be really excited if my stool didn't smell foul, but hey, let's go with it. If you got a rash or a fever, or if diarrhea just suddenly just develops and explodes, you're going to want to let them know. Explosive diarrhea is not a laughing matter, Wesley. That is a serious condition, but you do not want to treat it without advice from your healthcare professionals. But Trixie, it's even worse if your diarrhea or stools containing blood, pus, and mucus. That's just, that's worse than diarrhea. That's like, Woo! oh no, let's get on the phone. Call Dr. Dr. Joe, Joe. That Dr. sounds bad. It, it, it just sounds foul smelling and bad. And I don't know about you, but I don't want to ever see it. And you're not going to want to treat this without the advice from your healthcare professional, because maybe they don't want you to treat it. And also, I think what he's trying to say, Wesley has a condition, he's not been well medicated lately, so forgive him. Um, but uh, to add to that, less serious side effects include abdominal pain and nausea. And that basically wraps up the evening edition of Home News with Trixie Stevens and Wesley Purdue! Whoa! We're out, folks. Okay, so you can't say that. Dude, you took so long.